to my course, Game Development Basics, Week 2, Lesson 7, Timers. In this lesson, we'll describe the purpose of timers. We're going to describe the advantages of using a timer over things like a delay node. And then we'll demonstrate some timer implementation. So timers allow us to schedule actions to be performed after a delay. And a timer gives a lot more control than the delay node. Technically speaking, the delay node is a timer if you look under the hood of the Unreal Engine source code. The biggest issue with a delay node, though, is once you start the delay, you can't stop it. There's no control given to you with that node. Whereas a timer gives a lot more control. We can set, pause, unpause, clear, and many more functions of a timer. The inputs of a timer node are the time that you want to be delayed, the event or function that we want to be delayed, and then whether or not we want it to be looping. And there are two types of timers available to us in blueprints, set timer by event and set timer by function name. Let's head back to Unreal Engine and set up some timers in our project. So here I am back in Unreal Engine and where we left off, when we start the game, our bug will spawn into the game and start moving towards the player but we want multiple bugs to be spawned into the level. And when we spawn this bug, we're doing it in our game mode and on begin play, we're just calling the spawn bug function. Let's delete this and drag out and let's type set timer. And we can see those two available to us, set timer by event and set timer by function name. For this, let's choose set timer by function name. The input object for this we'll leave as self. And the function name, we want to type spawn bug. Now be careful here because we're passing in a string. And so if there's any typos, this will not work. So be very careful that you're typing it exactly as the name of the function. And the time here will be the delay to call this function. Let's call it so that a bug is created every three seconds. And if we want, we can drag off of this and promote it to a variable and call it spawn timer. And here we have a Boolean check as to whether we want this to be looping or not. If it's not looping, this timer is going to be called one time. But one benefit of using a timer is that we can check this box and it will just continue to call this timer until we clear it. Let's see how this looks in our game. I'm going to compile, press play, and we should see that every three seconds, a new bug is spawned into our world. And this is great. So we have a couple issues though. The first issue is that we can't actually kill the bugs. And the second issue is the bugs can't kill us. So this is just going to keep piling up until the game eventually crashes. Let's set up some functionality to kill these bugs. I'm here in the bug and there's an event built in to our actor class called event actor begin overlap. Let's drag off this and type destroy. If you remember, we can use this to destroy an actor and we'll leave this set to self. And we only want to call this if the overlapping actor is a cannonball. So we can drag off of this pin which gives us a reference to the actor that overlapped. We can type get class. And then we can see if this class is equal to our cannonball. Let's create a branch here and plug this in here. So what this will do is when something overlaps our bug, if it is a cannonball, will destroy the bug. Let's test this out. So now, when our bug is spawned in, we'll fire our cannonball and we can hit that bug. But we notice that the cannonball also just continues to travel. So let's also destroy the cannonball when the bug is hit. We still have a reference here, so we can copy this destroy actor with control D. 
and then drag the reference here right into that. And we want to use the first destroy actor for this. If we were to do it this way, then the bug would be destroyed and then this would never get called. So we want to destroy the cannonball first and then destroy the bug. And I also noticed one other weird behavior, and that is that the cannonball is coming a little bit higher than I would like it to. So I'm gonna go back to the player tower. I'm gonna to take my cannon. I'm gonna drag it down just a little bit. And now it should be at a good height that it can hit the bugs. Let's test this out. Now when we hit a bug, the bug is destroyed and the cannonball is destroyed. We can implement one other timer as well. If you remember, we set up this function on our cannonball that after three seconds, it would destroy itself. And that was so that the cannonballs didn't just go out into eternity and eventually cause our game to crash. Let's delete this delay. We're gonna do set timer by event. And you notice this one looks a little bit different. The input is an event and it has this little red square. The red square is the same as the one that's at the top of every event node. So let's start by setting that timer back to three seconds. And we can drag off of this and create a new variable called cannon ball range. And this will allow us to adjust that on the fly if we wanted to have a cannonball go a little bit longer. Let's drag off of this event and create a custom event. And we'll call this destroy. And now we can connect the destroy actor to this event. And just quickly to explain how this is gonna work. On event begin play, which is when the cannonball is spawned into the world, we're immediately gonna set a timer and we're gonna set that timer to three seconds, which is the range of our cannonball. The timer is linked to this event. So at the end of this timer, this event will then be triggered, which will then trigger this functionality, which is to destroy our cannonball. And we'll see this works exactly as it did before without the use of a delay node, which means if we wanted some functionality to stop this timer, then we could do that. Let's compile and just make sure everything's still working. And we can see after three seconds, our cannonball was destroyed. All right, so everything's working as intended now. In the next lesson, we're gonna talk about loops and how we can use those in our game.